This is the January 1st, 2024 field update. I'm going to try and do this one in a couple of parts because the long videos never seem to load. They end up getting stuck in the whole YouTube pending world. Uh, so this area we grazed through this summer all the way up until that back point. We came through it. This is the area is two times and we seated behind them so we were rotationally grazing with uh, Premier One electric net. And we have been grazing it again recently. So a lot of this stuff has been eaten down some now, as well as the deer pressure. We are getting a lot of deer pressure now, but still a pretty good stand. A lot of this stuff I think will really take off this spring. We did not have a whole lot of growth through the summer because we were incredibly dry. But you can see there's isolated patches of really nice lush green and then as we get into some of the other areas there's certainly a lot less but some of the oats and barley are popping up in there um some of the other stuff is coming in as well for the most part we seed <clears throat> seed in the paddock and let the animals trample it in a bit Now, chickens had come down this row, I think starting about there, and have gone up to where you see them. So they're zigzagging back and forth across the field. One move every day. And you can really see where they were when we actually started getting rain and all the seeds germinated behind them. This is beautiful lush green patch. And then you can see where we stopped getting rain again. As I said, it's been a very, very dry year up until now. And of course now, not complaining about getting the rain, but it's just uh, making things a whole lot more of a muddy mess. And our temperatures have been low enough that there's not been great germination, but it is there. Really excited about this strip. It's not very big. But this spring, that should jump ahead of everything else, give us that time to graze it, and then allow everything else to really pop off. There's a lot of vetch coming in, and a lot of it is in areas that are not looking too great, so I'm happy about that. And I'll get some greenery going in there. There's a, looks like a poplar tree. It's waist high already, so that's cool. A lot of broom sedge, a lot of dog fennel. As we got to the point this year, I knew I wasn't gonna get the dog fennel knocked back before it went to seed. So it's gone to seed, it's doing its thing. Uh, bittersweet about that, obviously, is um, the seed bank was already here, so it's been coming up on its own pretty heavily. <coughs> I don't know how big of an impact it would have been getting rid of the seed, but never know now i'm gonna let it sit up here through most of the winter and what that's doing is it's offering us some windbreak offering some animal habitat and uh, really slowing down the water flow a good bit i've noticed a massive reduction in runoff from the field versus when we first took over uh, and it was bare ground from being row cropped and now you actually can hear it when you're outside after a rain, you can hear the water starting to trickle in in some of these areas where it's kind of percolating through all the wormholes and everything. So that's been really exciting. And it doesn't stay muddy nearly as long. Now you can see here, another area that the greenery is coming in pretty nice. There's actually a dandelion blooming, which is pretty cool for January. Uh, but there's a, a mix of stuff. There's some radish and turnip seeded throughout here. There's some of the forage kale and forage collards coming in. A lot of chicory in areas, but you can see it's just getting decimated by the deer this year. I mean, they are hitting a lot of that stuff very, very hard. 
now in the areas where it's within the dog funnel <coughs> it's typically not getting hit nearly as hard as when it's in a in an open area as you can see it here they come in there they're stomping all over it and eating it but it's definitely better off in the tall areas so that's one of the things i'm happy about with the dog fennel is it has offered some protection and then weather dependent i'll get in here and do some uh, pretty aggressive mowing when we start to get to the end of the season i'll see i'll blow seed in first and then get the mower out or the bush hog and uh knock the good majority of it down that'll kind of mulch in the seed a little bit <clears throat> now the cool season grasses did not take off in a lot of areas and i believe that's just because we were so dry when they should have been taken off that a lot of the stuff did not germinate but it's there and we'll get a fair amount more down come springtime and uh try and and get some stuff established ahead of where we're grazing as well as where we are currently grazing so as we get up to this front portion this area was a naturally a very wet area and planted a lot of willow trees through here it's actually one right here that's quite large now this was planted not as a small whip but as a about a three foot tree and it's probably uh, eight feet tall now <coughs> but this area was a very wet area uh, a lot of a lot of runoff through it and a lot of standing water and the, the uh, broom sedge and dog fennel have both done uh, a lot higher densities through here it seems they're tall but it's also a very high density of the actual plant and then we do have an area right up here that was almost all broom sedge and i unrolled a really crappy round bale into it i didn't ever graze over that or anything but just left the round bale um sprawled out and I don't know it seems to maybe be doing something maybe not it's hard to really say is is you know that was uh when was that that was june and so there hasn't been a whole lot of activity on it but we'll see what happens in the future with that i had thrown seed into it some of the stuff had taken off but you can see a large amount of broom sedge here i'm not sure how